I got my first briefcase. I've been trying to keep up with more international options for lower cost and mid-ranger phones. One of the brands I've been working on getting a bit more familiar with, all the various sub-brands from Xiaomi. They sent me that locked case with an F3 and the brand new Poco M4 Pro 5G to take for a test drive and share some thoughts. I haven't handled a Poco for any length of time since the original, so when the M4 arrived, this was a significant leapfrog for me. I skipped years of in-between phones, and that's definitely contributing to some of my more positive feels, because ultimately this is a banger of a budget option. While techies might be frustrated with some other brands that have walked away from the flagship killer moniker. The Poco label seems to be tripling down on that philosophy. The entire label is built around the marketing slogan, everything you need, nothing you don't. Lower cost for higher performance with targeted compromises that makes sense for the folks interested in more wallet-friendly fare. Still, for some of those compromises, the hilarious part is this tier of phones likely arrives more feature complete and better accessorized than many of the upscale options that we normally feature on our tech YouTube channels. There's an idea of the highest tier of compute power and bleedingest edges of camera tech. And if you don't need those things in your phone, the rest of the spec sheet is probably better represented here, especially once we break it down dollars to donuts. For a long while, I feel folks had to overbuy so they wouldn't be punished by poor build quality and bad cameras. Now, we actually get things that perform better than on more expensive phones. This is a monster battery life option. It has a headphone jack and a memory card slot. It can be your universal remote. <laughs> and the fingerprint sensor is just playing better here than any in-display option I've used this year. I've been saying this since the Pixel 3a launch in North America, but we're no longer <sighs> sighing about these phones. I guess someone could suffer one of these poor phones to save a little cash. Oh no, I genuinely believe that these are options people will just like as phones, full stop. The lower price will just be an additional perk. It's real hard to get much worked up on some of the compromises. The mission of a Poco is well represented here, and we get to the marketing, which helps bring more people to the brand. The flagship killer years of OnePlus were kind of a turnoff for me, and I think Poco is playing a much smarter messaging game. It's simple, direct, but a little friendlier around the edges and not quite so edgelord. We want that club vibe, right? You know, the feeling like you're part of a group, but it doesn't feel quite so toxic as other early attempts at budget disruptor phones. This is a critical part of the conversation because there are a lot of options with similar components near this price and standing out from that crowd is a significant challenge. We just have crazy high expectations at lower and lower prices. A more expensive mid-ranger from last year is still a solid buy today. So our new phones have to find increasingly aggressive price to performance. 90 hertz display? Sure, you need higher refresh. Now, it's on an LCD and not a fancier OLED, and I wish it could get a little brighter, but it's plenty usable when I'm out and about. NFC used to be a feature that had to be advertised on older Poco phones to know if it was actually in the phone or not, and we can just trust it's now in this tier. Pretty solid stereo speakers. <laughs> Yeah, this is a great multimedia streaming option. 33 watt charging is decently quick and on a phone that can legit get two solid days of use. Chatting performance is kinda interesting. I test phones pretty hard and I do believe that buying an expensive phone should help replace some laptop grade computing use. The MediaTek hardware on tap here is right in line with mid-ranger Qualcomm hardware. Now, performance not too far behind a Snapdragon 760 like we're talking LG Velvet territory from last year. It's not the most fun for heavier content creation. You're not gonna finish off 4K video renders. And I absolutely do not believe that the people who might be shopping this phone would care 
in the slightest. When it comes to processing power, that does limit some of the more advanced camera modes that we take for granted on more expensive phones. We've got a solid sensor on tap. You know, it outputs respectable 12 megapixel stills. I know, 50 megapixel sensor. What matters more is that it's a slightly smaller sensor than most other mid-ranger phones. 50 megapixels sounds more impressive, but binned down to 12 MP, we're at 1.2 mic micron pixels. So it's a smaller sensor than what you would find in like a Pixel 4a. It works really well as a point and shoot option. And for the most part, we're in good shape for fun things like like portrait mode. And unlike my Pixel 6 Pro, you can spit out a full resolution 50 megapixel JPEG. You probably shouldn't shoot that very often, but you can. It's gonna be just solid all-rounder performance in good to medium lighting conditions. It's definitely gonna struggle once we start pushing it to the more extreme lower light shots. The output here, well, the, the phone's doing its best. It's you know, a for effort. Video is capped at 1080p 60, which is a bit of a bummer. I like stepping up to 4K video on other mid-range phones, but as long as folks kind of understand what they're in for here, I don't think it's too bad a compromise. There's a respectable ultra-wide camera. It's a handy single-click panorama option when you're in good light, but it falls apart even faster in lower light situations. Maybe the biggest hot take criticism I can throw at this phone, all the hardware on the back to try and make this camera look more impressive than it really is. You know, the full Poco rectangle across this back with the raised main camera bulge and the second square of stovetop circles that there's only one other physical camera on the phone. Altogether, it looks cool, but it's kind of a silly bit of posturing. No one should seriously be claiming this as any kind of content creator powerhouse. And I think it's gonna perform fine for most of the situations that you're gonna need a camera in your pocket. It reinforces though how much I'm liking the general layout on Xiaomi's camera app. Options, panels, fully featured with a manual mode that has raw support and focus peaking. I wish the mode slider didn't take up so much space and block so much of your focus area on the right side of your frame and video. Even on lower end hardware, this camera app does a great job providing features and options for photos and videos. Out of the box, it's pretty capable. You do have a little bit more room to push this camera. One last hardware bit, radio support is in good shape. Unfortunately, I couldn't run a bunch of wireless tests around LA, but in my neighborhood, I was getting solid 5G speeds, just better than half what my Pixel 6 can pull down for downloads. Ditto, some impressive Wi-Fi performance. Pulling files from my NOS were landing at roughly half the data transfer speed of a Galaxy S21 on my Wi-Fi 6 router, and that's not bad for this price tier. That's a practical, real world speed. Wrapping this up, I'm getting a better handle on MIUI. I still feel this is the most heavily skinned flavor of Android available right now, but using it on a lower power phone, it is nicely polished up. Interactions are smooth. I regularly find just those tiny little hangs or slight stutters scrolling, but the combo of pretty UI software and a 90 hertz screen delivers a phone that feels faster than it probably is in terms of just outright horsepower from the SoC. I have a few concerns. I do not like the default split notification shade. This is a bad idea to copy from Apple where one side of your screen pulls your settings and the other side pulls notifications. I'm so happy that there's an option to replace that with a traditional Android notification shade. Also, it seems pretty common on a Xiaomi you're going to deal with some bloat. There's a lot of pre-installed software that I just won't ever touch. Having Facebook pre-installed was bad, but a lot of the games included are just okay-ish. You'll probably spend a little time cleaning out stuff you don't want. Lastly, I have to bring it up on every Xiaomi review. It makes me a little anxious when we see basic system apps disclosing web connections and data tracking. There's nothing about a calculator app that's going to be improved by tracking my use and sending that data to another server. Nothing. I understand internationally Xiaomi works a different business model with software and services, but stuff like that makes 
me scrunchy face a little. But that's about where we gotta wrap this up. Where's that leave us with the Poco M4 Pro 5G? I mean, yeah. This is brutally competitive hardware, achieving a fantastic price to performance option, and I think it lives up well to the marketing claims from Xiaomi. I gotta get real nitpicky to share some concerns, or I have to play around with a wider price envelope to talk about phones I like better in some kind of comparison. Spec sheet and design and performance? I kinda like the Mi 11 Lite just a bit better, but it's not a straight win. The Mi 11 Lite has a nicer camera and a nicer screen. The Poco has better battery life and a headphone jack. And the M4 is starting off at a lower price for a 5G model than the Mi 11 Lite's LTE flavor. Increasingly, as we climb to higher prices on premium phones, those higher prices don't make a lot of sense unless folks really are looking to drive those phones harder. For covering daily driver communication needs, phone calls, email, texting, social media, streaming video, doing a little light gaming. The difference between phones in this tier and phones that cost three times more is getting finer and finer and finer. Like one of my biggest criticisms of the phone is probably the back plate and how it gets kind of smudgy in a gross way. So you use it with a case and you're fine. Excellent competition around this price tier. As these phones keep getting better and better. Fewer and fewer compromises to suffer while increasingly supplying features lacking on more expensive phones. And there's always an emotional component to a phone purchase where I think Poco is nailing that vibe too. If a phone can feel like being a part of a club, yeah, I think they're doing it right. I've recently spent quite a bit of time with some crazy expensive phones. It's exactly this kind of gadget that balances our expectations. It gets work done, and it gets it done for not a lot of cash. I will, of course, leave some links down below for more information on the Poco M4 Pro 5G. That, that name is long. And if you'd be down for a revisit on the Poco F3, let me know. We could probably make something like that happen. I'm talking about another killer bang for buck option. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. I greatly appreciate everyone who is checking out the links in the description down below, maybe shopping a little merch. That kind of support really does help keep production rolling on this channel. Full list, all my affiliates and partnerships on somegadgetguy.com, or you might consider just maybe. Joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically a collection of the coolest tech pals in the universe. So I hope you check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch, uh, Facebooks and the Instagrams, and I will catch you all on the next review.